Welcome back to the Goose Goes South, leg eight. And on this leg, we leave Palm Beach, cross the Gulf Stream, and head to the Bahamas. We had spent about a week at Safe Harbor Old Port in Palm Beach. What a luxury place to hang out. The weather forecast was perfect and it was time to leave. The weather in the cut was a little bumpy, but that was to be expected and a little bit of ship traffic, but all, all was good. It sure was nice to be heading east into the open ocean and out of the ICW. Waving goodbye to Florida was great. Next stop, Bahamas. But before that, we had some shipping to deal with and the AIS was wonderful. The deep blue water of the Gulf Stream never bores one. It is beautiful. Tenley was on land lookout and it wasn't long before we heard Land Ahoy Skipper, a welcome sight of West End in the Bahamas. It was time to hoist the quarantine flag in preparation for a Bahamian customs and immigration. So we're done with the quarantine flag and now I'm going to hoist the courtesy flag. And a big thank you to Sophia at Bahamian Customs who made the whole clearance procedure an absolute pleasure. Here we are at West End in the Bahamas. We left Palm Beach this morning at about 6.30 and we did 60 miles today. It was a little bumpy in the beginning. Actually, it was a little bumpy the whole way until we got to the Bahamas and I felt it, but we're here. I had my little seasick patches on, they worked great. And now we have finally arrived in the Bahamas and look at this beautiful scenery around us. We're very excited to be here. The next morning we unfolded the bikes, hit the road, and explored West End. And we were so fortunate to find a bunch of local fishermen, conch fishermen, who had a few moments for us, and we had a wonderful chat. How's life? Everything's good. All right, got some, got some conch? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going out now. Uh, okay. Is there a lot of conch around? Yeah, plenty. Plenty conch. Yeah, plenty conch. Not a, not a sandy geek, you know? Yeah. And who are you selling to? Me? They have uh, a guy who's come around who does buy good morning, good morning. Good morning. skin good morning. conch by the pound or they buy them by the piece. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah. People come in from Freeport. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you buy yourself. They buy a little dozen, two dozen, three dozen, and things like that. Okay. You know? Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Good morning. Mm -hmm. How's you got, you got your Hawaiian sling? Oh, yeah, down mm. pack. What's that? Yes, sir. <laughs> it looks good. Yeah, in case if something happens on the other they can come home. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Well, thanks for chatting. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. We cast off our lines from the marina in West End and turned the corner to cross the Little Bahama Bank, a bank that runs for many, many miles, probably 60, 70 miles at about 10 feet depth and crystal clear, calm water. How beautiful it was to be able to float along in those conditions. Perfect conditions for Tenley to do her yoga class on the top deck while I kept the boat trucking along in these gorgeous conditions towards Double Breasted Key. Double Breasted Key came highly recommended. I'd done some research and especially in the waterway guide, they said it's a beautiful place, but a little bit of a tricky entrance and make sure you arrive at slack tide. Well, as you can see, the water was crystal clear, beautiful to come in, but there was one little area where you could see where it looked like a left turn was needed, but actually it ran dead. And I just touched the bottom, spun the boat around, went back out, went around and continued onto the anchorage. The red mark on my aerial photograph shows you exactly where I made that little error and how easy it was to make that error and go left and not go straight a little further and then take a left. The anchorage was beautiful. We dropped our 35 pound mantis anchor in a nice spot of sand and it dug right down instantly. What a great little anchor. As you can see from the aerial drone shots, an idyllic anchorage well worth the effort. Our first anchorage and what an ideal setting. Time to take a dive over the side and have a look at the crystal clear Bahamian water. What a beautiful spot to be and Tenley sure enjoyed a quick snorkel. Time to take a dinghy ride and explore the beautiful surroundings and clear water we had just anchored in and also take a short walk ashore and be greeted by a manta that came right up to us and a couple of beautiful sand spits. Dinner was a delicious dinner of wahoo 
given to us by the local fishermen on the little island. We had moved on and this is the sunrise that greeted us at Allen's Pensacola Key a little further south in the chain. We selected Green Turtle Key for the next front that was coming our way with breeze of somewhere in the 30 knots with a lot of rain and squalls. It was a wonderful place to meet the local kids, deal with the weather, do some boat work, and we met a ton of great cruisers. So a fun place to have dinner, find some bars, and explore the island. Here's the $5 yeah. bill that we brought from Most Newport definitely. to spend in the All Bahamas. The Several people have asked me how far south are we going to go. Well, we're going down the intercoastal, down to Florida, and then we're going to go across the Gulf Stream to a place where we can spend this. Then I'll be happy. And we are at Miss Emily's Blue Bee Bar and buying our first Goombe Smash with it. All right. So there we go. We don't know how much it's going to cover the Goombe Smash. But... <laughs> My name is Kimani. And I'm from the Bahamas. And my <coughs> and I like to play basketball. Where do you go to school? Um, Central Albuquerque Primary. Oh, so that's on the other side. You yep. gotta take the ferry. Yep. Okay, excellent. Well let's go take some pictures of basketball. Thank you. My name is Duran, I'm gonna do a dunk. Shoot the ball! My name is Terrence, and I'm gonna do a dunk. My name you is Kate, and I'm always gonna do a dunk. Oh. I'm gonna do none, my name is Price. Well, third time's a charm. I took the whole macerator pump apart, the one that I put in at Safe Harbor Jarrett's Bay, I, which I installed, and I found a little piece of rope. Who, who knows how a little piece of rope gets in a macerator pump, which had blocked up the blades. And so I put it all back together, and it's working like a champ, so hallelujah. Now we can pump shit. Not in the harbor, obviously out at sea, but that's a big thing. First, you pour yourself a glass of ferry. I am making some wahoo curry from the wahoo that the fisherman gave us. So I browned this fish and I am now putting onions in the pan. And then I'm gonna put some carrots and cauliflower and some, make a nice curry for dinner tonight on this rainy, kind of crappy, windy day. Let this mellow in the pot for a while. Bon appetit. The front we had been expecting was rapidly developing with 35 to 40 knots of breeze out of the north, northeast, and with tons of rain and showers. Perfect to try my own design of cockpit awning, which doubled up as rain catchment as well. And it worked perfectly. Steve Lippincott had made it. He's a canvas maker from Florida. And as you can see here, it filled the tank. Tinley and I were pretty keen to visit the local church in Green Turtle Key. So we rented a golf cart, braved the elements, put our foul weather gear on, and took the ride to the church to listen to the sermon and to the local music. He always covered me. And so when I heard that he had died, right, it really took something out of me. But I was talking to a pastor, and I was relating it to him, and he asked me a question. And for 20 plus years, that, that's always stayed with me, he said, was anybody able to talk to him about his soul? Went through 2000 with Floyd and Dennis, Wilma and Dennis, four major hurricanes. So we've been uh, dodging the bullet since then. Yeah. And then here comes Dorian with a catastrophic hurricane that just wiped a, a central Abaco, yeah. central Maine from Green Turtle to Hopetown, Marsh Arbor, Treasure. Mm -hmm. And um, at, at our generation, it really took a toll on us. 
Mm-hmm. Due due to the yeah the yeah the age and uh, and owning a business, of course. And then COVID as well, right? Right, and then you know the the volunteers, the boaters, friends came here in January, say, and um, they helped me rebuild and clean up. Nice. And the end of April, again, uh, the government hacked them, the volunteers to to leave because we couldn't feed our country, oh. especially Albuco. Time to head out and see the clear water again and be accompanied by a beautiful dolphin as we headed off toward Manowar Key. The entrance is narrow, but with a crystal clear water, you can really see where to go and in the right conditions, it's not that complicated. And time for a visit to Albury's Sail Shop. My name's Aurelia Albury. I don't know. I've known how to sew all my life, yeah. <laughs> but I've been sewing for this company probably 20, 30 years. No, not continuous. Have you found a lot of people coming back now since the hurricane and since uh, you've been repairing your buildings and your shop? Or is everybody coming back and buying it's stuff? Just starting up right now. It's, oh, okay. It was real slow for a while because of COVID. We opened up that end of the year. Uh, December of the same year as the storm, but oh, wow. then we had to close, you know, we couldn't be open to the public. Right. We still stayed in so good. <laughs> the Albury family has been a big part of the boat building scene here at Manowar Key, as seen in this example of an Abaco sailing dinghy. Jamie Albury, started it, my dad started building boats in uh, 52, I think. Well, he, was building, he started building fiberglass in 1984. Is building that's a old wooden boat over there that that he built one of the last ones, and he took a mold off of that for the for the 1885 fiberglass, and they extended that and made the 20, and then the 23. So you say you have a lot of boats to build. Why why are you so busy now? What's what's causing that? <laughs> I don't know. Since Oregon and Dorian, everything is just picked up in all the boating industry, just pick, picked up. We were very fortunate that Andy Albury gave us some time in his fabulous model shop to talk about his work. I fall of the boat that sails in the Isle Island Regalis, named the Abaco Rage. To a Bahamian, the word rage was when a surge came off the ocean, and that was the word they chose. So the idea was get out of the way, there's a rage coming. But they would make a half all the shape that they liked, then they would take the lines off of this, and everything would be changed to actual size. With a bag of ice in hand, it was time to leave lovely Manowar Key and head for Hopetown. Hopetown, with its candy striped lighthouse, the Elbow Key Light, is always a must stop and a wonderful place to spend the night. A sunset bike ride to the Hopetown Music and Rum Festival was in order and was a fantastic spot to be. It was time to leave Hopetown, motor out the channel, and head across the water to Tulu Pond on Tulu Key, which was a wonderful, quiet, secluded place, clear water, protected, and a great place to swim. Our next destination was Little Harbor, but to reach Little Harbor we had to cross some fairly exposed water on the bank so a little rock and roll and I decided to take a chance with my cedar plugs and see if I could catch anything. We nailed a barracuda but unfortunately we had to throw them back as they are not edible. We had a good run down to Little Harbor, found a nice mooring protected close by the shore and a wonderful place to sit out for a couple of days to wait for weather to cross the open ocean to Eleuthera. Pete's Pub is a find. What a great place to have a couple of beers, burgers, or fish, or whatever. And we loved hanging out in Little Harbor. Little Harbor was the last stop for us in the Abacos, and it has been amazing. All the great people, the cruisers, the locals, the scenes, the Little Harbors, the restaurants. It's been fantastic, and we look forward to carrying on to the next group of islands.